phenomenon of life, when looked into in depth, is a subject as profound in meaning as the philosophical terms of space and time. Scientifically, we can only ever comprehend a tiny section of the vast research and experience that has been defined. In our urge for knowledge, we ask questions, yet only receive fragmented answers, which in themselves are open to interpretation. Since the Middle Ages, the great minds in medicine have tried to explain the procedures of health and diseases. These empirical observations led to Hippocrates' theory of the four humours, which assumes that many illnesses are due to a false composition of body fluids. Within certain limits, this remains valid even in the light of today's modern research. It is in particular the body fluids that represent the biochemical processes in the body and are therefore of profound value when making a diagnosis. In this scientific film, we will be showing you the latest developments in the field of medical and biological basic research, as documented with an elaborate and revolutionary new type of grey field optical microscope called the Ergonome 500. It is important to understand the capabilities of this microscope so that you can better understand this film. This grey field optical microscope uses a unique optical construction to enable magnifications of more than 25,000 times, as seen in natural light, full colour, and with a resolution of better than 100 nanometers. This can be demonstrated on the Amphilora pellucida, whose lamellas are 250 nanometers wide. The distance between the holes in a single lamella is 180 nanometers, and the hole diameter is 140 nanometers. Such resolutions are simply not possible with conventional optical microscopes. This procedure allows us to focus on any level through the whole thickness of the connective tissue, examined without higher or lower tissue levels blurring the focus. This is roughly comparable with X-ray tomography. In this example of a thick brain section, you can create accurate slides of the various levels of the specimen by using this special technique. This technology allows you to create 3D computer models of living tissue. In this example of a deep skin section, the individual photographs of each layer have been used to create a 3D computer animation, allowing you to see fine details from any angle. Using the same method, the blood circulation in the tail of a living tadpole can be made visible. As well as the peristalsis in the intestines of this red mite. An additional feature of the ergonome technology is the variable depth of field, which makes three-dimensional observations possible, as can be clearly seen in these images of bone structure. The true colour stereo rendition of living preparations, without the need for either staining or subjecting the preparation to a harmful environment, allows us to achieve a greatly improved picture quality, as is evident in these images of the Alga spirulina platensis. All fluids found in the living world of plants, animals and humans contain a microbe which various scientists have called an endobiont, somatida or oncoexma. It is to be found in all body fluids including the blood, urine, saliva and the seminal fluid. 
At first, this microbe appears in the size of a virus, but depending on its environment, can mutate to the size of bacteria, and under certain circumstances, can even manifest itself in the fungal form. The endobion's purpose in an intact environment is the marginal yet permanent stimulation of the immune system. The environment or terrain throughout our body can be in a normal physiological or imbalanced pathological state. With the term environment, we are relating to the internal balance, the metabolism, the pH value, hormones, fats, glucose, proteins, the state of the immune system, degree of waste products in the metabolism, minerals, vitamins, and trace elements. The constellation of all these elements is vital for our health or illness. The endobiont adapts itself to the changing environment, which can be seen through the microscope as a change in its shape and form. To provide evidence of this, a blood sample was washed several times to eliminate the serum infestation, and then placed in a saline solution and enriched with glucose. After about 10 minutes, the endobiont has escaped from the infracyte into the synthetic environment, where it develops itself first into a Y shape and then continues to mutate into a rod shape. Then it divides itself into tiny cocky, which finally emit ball-shaped elements into the surroundings. When subjected to an even more extreme change to its environment, the endobiont will even develop into a fungal state, as the following pictures show. Strong mycelia in serum, flexible mycelial threads with spores coming from a red blood cell, conidiospores, Yeast forms budding. Blastospores. The conclusions that can be drawn from these observations are that the stage of the endobiont development provides information on the state of the environment in the patient, which can be used for diagnostic analysis. The environment, of course, also leaves its mark on the cell structure of the organism, and the endobiont can also be seen in the cells under pathological conditions. This is the membrane of a healthy spermous epithelial cell. The surface structure is evenly interlaced and looks vital and harmonious. This normal appearance is lost in relation to the quantity of endobiontic material that appears in the cells. The human squamous carcinoma cell exhibits protrusions on the surface, which appear here in white. This enlargement clearly proves the loss of structure. On this tumor cell, two dividing vesicles can be seen on the lower left edge. After approximately 10 minutes, four particles of mutated structures can be observed. Further, these particles are released as a vesicle and navigate freely in the substrate, comparable to a viral propagation. The process of channeling out virus-like particles from tumor cells usually works by creating vesicles that extrude and then separate from the main cell. These vesicles often contain actively mobile viroids, which move freely in their plasma, or which have left the cytoplasm to occupy the outer cell membrane, and then move with the whole complex